Hello, and welcome to Rome 2, Episode 14, The Battle of Terrace. Without further ado, let's get into it. We are going to have Lucius Julius Libo of Roma commanding Legio II with 3,400 men attacking the city of Terrace, defended by Eurysthenes of Epirus. He is leading 3,350 men with 160 ships reinforcing. And we are going to assault the city. So, in Rome 2, when you first siege a city, you get two siege ladders as your default equipment. So you'll see that I start off with two siege ladders, and that's what I'm going to go with. As you can see here, it's a city battle. It's a walled city, so they're going to be on top of the walls. They only have three units of regulars as part of their you know, garrison. The rest are all going to be militia units, so they're going to be pretty quick to chew through. Also, as an aside, I'm trying something new this episode, so we'll see if it works out. I'll let you know afterwards. Uh, but for now, we're just going to start deployment. We usually don't like rain, but in this case, we like rain, and I will tell you why eventually. So we're going to set up one of our siege ladders here, and they're going to attack the fortification there. We're going to put a Princope nearby. We're going to... Go ahead and put another siege ladder there, and after Princope, put a Triarii force nearby. Then we're just going to get started right away here. It's going to take the ladder some time to get to the wall. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, I don't really like speeding up the game if I don't have to. Like during the battle. I also don't pause the game, so that's something else. Even though technically I could pause the game, I feel like that's unrealistic to pause the game and give battlefield orders. So we don't, we don't do that. We just go as it is. Uh, so what you can see here I'm doing is I'm getting the uh, the Princopes in line behind the Triarii. And I send the Triarii up the walls first because I think they're going to be the best for the job. Right? They have the highest armor rating of all my units and they have the highest defense. So we're just going to have them go up first. And then we're going to have the Princopes follow. You can see I'm attacking two portions of the wall here. And the reason I left it raining is because what usually happens, if I recall properly, you can see here, they like to use flaming projectiles. And those flaming projectiles have a chance of lighting my ladders on fire. I do not want my ladders to be lit on fire. Because if my ladders are lit on fire, they will collapse and I will no longer have ladders. So, yeah, no good. You can see I maneuver my cavalry over here, so remember the 180 reinforcing ships, they are just Toxitai, Toxitai meaning archers, so once they land, my cavalry will charge them and smash them and destroy them. In the meantime though, like I said, we're going to have these Triarii head in, and then we're going to have in waves of Princopes heading behind them. We're going to usually save two Princopes for each battle group, just as a reserve, so we have battle group 1 and battle group 2. Battle group 1 is obviously where the first ladder is and battle group 2 will be where the second ladder is. Well, yep, yeah, it's, uh, siege battles I think are kind of boring because it's literally a numbers game, an attrition game. You literally just climb the walls and smash your face against the enemy's face until one of your faces decides they don't want to take it anymore. Not the most engaging combat. Depending on how things shake out, you know, we'll go from there, but I've been doing a lot of, uh, I don't want to say research and stuff, but a lot of uh, learning here with recording and software and whatnot. Um, I usually use, I guess I'll go into it because this is the boring part of the battle. I usually use OBS to record the battle, right, the audio and the game. So the thing is, it goes on the podcast, but... Everything is also on YouTube, so if anyone wanted to watch what these battles look like, I have it posted so that when you go to the podcast episode, you can see a YouTube link. Anyways, what happens here is I have to convert the OBS file into an acceptable file for the podcast website to host. So I have to use a converter program for that. And the converter program, it's not terrible, but... 
it only can convert up to 9 gigs of data. So that's why like a lot of these battles, for whatever reason, the battles really are tough on the size of the file. And that's why those episodes tend to be shorter, like a half an hour, because either it's the rendering of all the units or of the city, whatever the reason is, you know, a half an hour episode eats up, you know, eight and a half gigs really quick, whereas like an hour to hour and ten minute episode of just our regular, right, just, you know, I don't want to say city management, but just regular management, look at that, we have a unit of enemy archers already wavering. Uh, regular game management doesn't eat up as much data, it doesn't eat up as much space. I'm not exactly sure why, like I said, my theory is rendering all these units in, right? This battle alone, we rendered in, what, six, seven thousand units. Also, my enemy cavalry have successfully massacred the two enemy Toxitize that came off these ships, so that's going well. Anyways, yeah, I'm trying to use Audacity now. So I'm going to record in OBS and Audacity at the same time. And this way, if it does happen to go over that 9 gig mark, I can upload the one to um, YouTube, right, the OBS. But Audacity can go on the website. The issue being, I can't get Audacity to capture two sources. So OBS captures my microphone right now, right, that's the Yeti I talk into. And then it also captures the game sound, whereas Audacity, I can only get to capture the microphone. So the microphone is picking up a little bit of the background noise from the game sounds that are coming out of my speakers. But we'll see afterwards how it how it sounds. I said I'm not sold just yet. I did a couple test runs, but I figured we'll use this episode as an actual test run. Just because city battles usually do take a little bit longer. They usually take like 30 to 40 minutes, so maybe I just cut the spotlight at the end and that might give me enough time, right? I, I hate cutting the spotlight because, you know, I have a good spotlight set for Terrace, but we'll see how long this battle takes. Uh, it'll be easily won. We weren't at complete full strength. We were missing a couple, you know, basically men, like a handful, but for all intents and purposes, 3,400 men is, is full strength. Uh, so yeah, they have a mix of archers and Greek militia on the walls, and uh, like I said, the Greek militia and the archers are not uh, not formidable units by any means. The, the archers are basically free kills when my heavily armored infantry get up there, and the, uh, the militia, while a little bit stronger, are still just a militia. You have a militia fighting a full-time professional Roman fighting force. So yeah, uh, they are raining a bunch of projectiles on my units, but given how heavily armored my units are, I'm taking almost no damage, if not no damage. So yeah, a uh, long time ago, each ladder had reached the walls. We have uh, both units of Triarii and a unit of Princapes on the way up on both sides now. And uh, yeah, I'm going to move my general actually a bit closer here so he can inspire Battle Group 1. I'll retool battle groups one and two here. There we go. And like I said, just a two-pronged attack. I'm gonna scale the walls here and uh, one of our units is used try to make ammunition. basically the left wall route, and then on the right side make the right wall route, and then uh, yeah, work my way towards this gate in the center here. Open up the gate. And if I have any reserve units, set in my reserve units. One of our units has used all its ammunition. But uh, we're not. Here is need to have reserve units here. I might just send everyone up the ladders. I haven't really decided just yet. Usually I just send everyone right up the ladders and just full commit. But we'll see what happens. So yeah, looking good. Um, none of my units are particularly bloodied, although this unit of uh, Nope, that is a unit of Greek militia. I thought that was my Triarii, but that is a unit of Greek militia that is heading out. So this is where the game gets, not fun, but minor minutia. I like all the experience I can get, you know, and all the captives. So I take my cavalry and I station them outside of the walls. And wherever the gates are, you know, as these, like you see these archers here, they're fleeing. They're going to leave the gates. I'll just hunt them down with my cavalry. But I think a handful of units have already, if not routed shattered I just straight up shattered i am in easy control of the walls here and like i said this is just because i'm fighting a bunch of irregulars 
know? And this is, at this point in the game, this is actually a battle hardened region. Like, Lake Gear 2 has seen three major engagements, and while, you know, I don't have a ton of experience, these men know what they're doing. So, we're slaughtering just about everyone we come across here. Yeah, we have one more unit of Princapes. We're gonna have this actually unit on the right go to the left. I am losing more men down here at the bottom than I thought I would for projectiles, but it's okay. Things could be worse. The uh, controls also get a little wonky when you're on the walls. That's why I'm not really moving people too much on the walls. I'm just leaving them centered right here around where they came up. So you can see where we climb the walls from the outside, there's actually a little gate here that the enemy is using to climb from the inside. So as they come up, we're just slaughtering them. The other side, the gate's a little bit further away, but the idea is the same. We just slaughter everybody. Like I said, it's not the most engaging gameplay, but it is gameplay nonetheless. So yeah, all of our units on the, uh, the left have successfully climbed the walls. So that's why I actually diverted a Princape unit from the right. And then we still have four units of Princapes held in reserve. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll wait for that gate to open where it's going to be a little bit wild. We have to chew through a lot of these bad guys here, these enemy units. Let's see if I can't get this Princape unit to capture this tower. Like I said, it's really tough to move people along the walls. They just, they don't want to move properly, but we're going to give it a go. Brave Romans to a man. That's right, we are brave Romans. Alright, so that Princape unit is successfully getting away. This one's trying to. Look at them running with their shields up. Blocking missile units like they, they should be. Greek archers on the inside are just trying to light up my units. They might be doing a pretty good job. But we got another unit of Greek archers that are in the midst of running for their lives. And this unit, Prink of Pace, just will not get out of combat. We'll zoom in here and give you an idea. Look at this melee right here. It is just a disaster. Like I said, it, the game does not do siege battles very well. I don't really like them, to be honest with you, but I ain't gonna sit here for 12 turns while I siege down a city. That's just... I don't want to say ridiculous is the right word, but it's kind of ridiculous. Well, so yeah, the detachment of Princapes in Group 2 was successful in getting away, so it's actually gonna capture a tower. And uh, my other Princope unit is slowly moving away, but it's taking a lot of time. We might get it away, and then it can attack this unit of Greek citizens. If I can get those Greek citizens to route, I can capture actually the left and right gateways, and not even worry about the central gateway. The central gateway is still kind of... I want to say kind of... kind of mucked up. Let's see if we can't pull out another unit here. Get this unit of Triarii. There's just, there's too many of my units on the walls now, and the front is only so big. Like, the walls are only so wide that, you know, I just don't need to inspire and rally again. We'll send that unit of Princapes from Battle Group 1 down to the ground to attack that unit of Greek citizens. That unit of Triarii from Group 2 is successfully getting away. We'll put this unit of Princapes on the ground now. It can capture the tower from the ground. Although... Maybe we won't put these Princapes on the ground. I was trying to get them on the ground, but... An enemy cavalry force just came over. I don't really want to deal with infantry and cavalry. Well, we're going to peel off our second Triara unit on the right-hand side of Group 2. We just... We don't need it. We got... Two units of... Princapes up there, they're doing just fine. Orders. Just slow moving. That's all. We have captured a tower. All right, so as you heard, we captured that tower. 
I'm gonna go ahead and actually move this Principe unit to the gate over here. We'll put that Triaria unit on the ground. Let's see if we can't get our second Triaria unit over, which we are. We're looking good. Right side's looking good. Left side. I don't want to say it's not looking good, but the enemy focused most of their forces there. So there's just been a steady stream of enemy units coming on up on the walls. Like there's still five, six enemy units on the uh, the left side where Group One is, whereas there's only been one unit on the right side for some time now. I very quickly and for whatever reason easily routed that side. Looks like that cavalry force and Greek citizens. Oh, they're supported by a Greek militia unit too, so we're still not gonna go down there. We're just gonna wait up here. We'll engage them from this other side over here. We're having much more success on the, uh, the right side where Battle Group 2 is. Much, much more success. So this, oh, no wonder they're not. Getting rid of so we get, went through all the militia units. This is the first unit of uh, regular units here, so we can see there are formation of Greek hoplites. That's why I'm making almost no progress because Greek hoplites, you know, they're actually tough. They, they don't, they don't fold right away. Also, I'm hoping not to have too many casualties this battle. You know, maybe four or five hundred or less because there is a a pyro uh, transport ship somewhere off the coast, right? The uh, the Titanes is still out there somewhere. I'm not sure where, but they're out there hanging out. You know, they came back from Syracuse after Pyrrhus was defeated by the RDI. And they could swing up and try to retake Terrace for sure. So I'd like to have as many units as possible. Now the good news is because Latin is the dominant culture in Magna Gratia, I should maintain most of the units I have here. Also, there's two units of archers rushing my Triarii, which is silly at best. Stupid to a fault at worst, but okay, they'll route pretty quick. I don't even know where those archers came from. Uh, yeah, so we have a unit of Greek hoplites and then a unit of Greek militia that we are still engaged with over here on the, uh, the left side with Battle Group 1. Battle Group 2, like I said, we're still fighting those Greek hoplites on the wall, and then we have our two Triarii engaged with two Greek archer units, and then the doors are almost open to this one gate. We're almost there. We have captured the gates! We did it! We have the gates, so we're gonna send our units in mass now. We have two cavalry two Principes and the General's unit outside of that gate waiting to come in. So we are just going to storm that gate like uh, Storm and Norman Schwarzkopf. Lightning battle here. Get inside and use our cavalry to do some more damage. We're also going to get our Principes moving around here. Like I said, units move awful slow for the city, so... We're going to try to set up. There's a unit of uh, Greek hoplites coming as well. So that's the last unit of Greek hoplites. There's one unit on the walls where Battle Group 2 is. There's one unit on the walls where Battle Group 1 is. And then there's the general right there, Eusthenes, with his Greek hoplites. Like I said, the Greek hoplites, they have a lot more morale. You know, they're down 40, 50 men. They don't fold. Looking good. Looking real good. I'm gonna stretch out the sprinkle pay line here. Stretched out lines are always good because we can go around the enemy phalanxes and flank them. There still is a unit of cavalry, militia, and citizens just sitting right next to this one unit of Principes I have next to the gate, which I'm not sure why they can't exactly capture the gate from the top, but. There they are, just hanging out. I'm gonna go ahead and attack this hoplite formation here. 
They're in a phalanx, so it might be a little ugly, but we are gonna redeploy one of our Triara units from down here to flank that unit of hoplites and then bring a unit of Prinkapes down here to compensate. So, I think things will go rather well. How are things looking? Uh, battle on the walls is pretty much at a stalemate. Like I said, we just gotta chew through these Greek hoplites, it takes a while. And the battle on the ground is going very well in our favor. See if cavalry can capture a tower. I think they can. Cavalry should be able to capture a tower. We get more towers shooting at our bad guys. It'll be good. All right, enemy cavalry has pulled away. They look like they might want to engage my cavalry, so you know what? We'll do it. Our equites are charging the enemy cavalry. We'll bring our general back down as uh, reinforcements to help out. Lots of redeploying of forces here. Well, we got some more equites outside here. We'll use them to uh, run down these shattered Greek units that are running out of the gate. Alright, so our Principes have just got here, and they are now helping out our Triara unit. And our Triara unit has arrived to the north and surrounded the enemy general. So it's two units of Principes and a Triara against the enemy Greek hoplite general. And then we have a Greek militia here. It's just a militia, so they'll probably fall pretty easily. Uh, my Triarii are getting a little chewed up because, you know, they fought on the walls already and they fought again. But, like I said, we got some help incoming. We got a unit of Prinkapes right here that's about to sweep in and help them out. The men are wavering. Come on, lads! So the men are wavering is actually that Triarii unit I was talking about. Because, uh... They were just outnumbered, getting hammered. Also, our Equite unit is getting hammered. We're down to 74 men, and the enemy cavalry is at 78, but my general just got here. So he's going to go ahead and join the battle. With the enemy cavalry gone, we also are going to send this unit of Prinkapes down, and we're going to have another unit of Prinkapes join them. If we can, we're going to get two units of Prinkapes to join them, but I don't know if we can get them out of the, or off the walls quick enough. The enemy general is wavering. He's at 0 to 10% morale, so he might break any time now. My Triarii are wavering, though, too. They're also 0 to 10% morale. They're down to 57 men, so they've took a bunch of casualties here from this unit of Greek militia. Well, that's what happens when you're out of formation and you're exhausted, but the choices we make. Our men flee the field of battle! Yep, and that Triarii unit decided to run. It's okay, we still have a unit of Prinkapes there. Uh, and the enemy general recovered morale somehow, I'm not sure how, but he did. Alright, like I said, this is where the game's kind of little boring, it's at a stalemate here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just fast forward this until something happens, because there's nothing happening right now. Do -do 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 -do. All right, we'll go back to regular speed. Give some commands to our units here. The battle is turning in our favor. All right. We gave commands. And we're going to go ahead and just fast forward again for a little while. So yeah, we have a bunch of distinct engagements here. We Our have men flee the field of battle. Oh, our triarii, second strength. group of triarii from group two are now wavering and then have fled. So we had five different engagements. The enemy general, the enemy cavalry, the enemy Greek militia, and then the units on the walls and the gates. So actually six, six different. The enemy cavalry is gone. They are no longer a problem. Um, the enemy 
Greek militia have shattered, so they are also no longer a problem. And I am now committing a unit of Equites, plus the two Princopes to the general's unit, Eurysthenes, to try to get him to run for his life. And then we're going to go send the rest of our cavalry here to the gate. And we're going to try to get them to fold. So these units on the walls are not going to fold very quickly. We're going to need to get the general if we can, and then these units inside the city to continue to fold. That will give us the boost we need to get the units on the walls to use, lose morale. Because they still have one, two, three, four, five, five units left now. Uh, the enemy general, I think, has successfully fled the battle. Uh, with him fleeing in my cavalry in pursuit, he should be dead very shortly, would be my guess. Princopes are doing well. They are chewing through this Greek militia, as you would expect. Uh, and then my cavalry has just arrived for the general. He is here, slaughtering the Greek citizens that are right behind them. We got a Princope unit incoming to help as well. But the Greek citizens are now wavering. Just to wait for the general to be dead. These hoplites are just tough on the walls. Okay, so we're at a little bit of a slow point again, so we're going to go ahead and fast forward. And regular time. So the enemy general, he should be dead, but I didn't get an enemy general dead warning, so I don't know what happened there. Anyways, the, enemy's, the enemy general unit is gone. Everything inside the city is gone. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. Well, that's one of my Equite units are pretty beaten up. Remember the Equite unit that went head to head with the Greek cavalry? They are dropped down to 32 men, 31 men. So they are in a little bit of trouble. That's why they're running for their lives. So we're gonna go ahead and send our cavalry out the gates here. Hopefully, in a minute, when we capture them, if we can capture them. No, we can't capture them. The game will not let us. So yeah, we got two Princopes versus one Greek militia. We got the Battle Group 2 on the wall still, just hanging out, and the Battle Group 1 on the wall still. So we're probably just going to fast forward and take this right to the end because there's not much left to do. The cavalry can't do anything, and it's just that slow grind of chewing up enemy units and spitting them out. That unit of... They finally are gone. Alright, so that unit of Greek militia is gone for good. Oh, there it is. That's how quick it happens. So, we cannot continue the battle to hunt our enemies down. So we are going to save the replay here. This is battle number four. We fought a Pyros. This is the city or the area of Terrace. And this is a city battle, so we're going to go ahead and put our C there. And then the year is 273 BCE. And replay saved. We're going to end the battle. There you have it. So that, it goes quick. Once enough units route, the rest of the units just flee because they have to. You look at this quick little thing here. The two enemy hoplite units, right? The Greek hoplites did not break. They were till the end on the walls. And there was a unit of archers mixed in there too. So that's why they didn't get completely killed. But once again... When the enemy general either died or ran away, that was a big morale hit. And then once, you know, the city was pretty much cleaned up. Like I said, we got in the city and cleaned up. And, you know, there wasn't much left to do. That was it. So, pretty easy. Shouldn't have been hard. We'll take a look at our after-action report here. We have... The Battle of Terrace was a decisive victory. Rome deployed 3,400 men. We lost 879, so that was still more than I wanted. We have 2,521 remaining. We had 2,590 kills with 795 enemies captured. Apyros deployed 3,510 men, so about even odds, but remember they're mostly irregulars, so not even at all. They lost 3,510 men. They have zero remaining. They killed 640 with zero enemy captured. 
So we're going to go ahead and do what I've been talking about in the past. We're going to loot the city. Looting will give us 13,944 denarii, that huge cash infl infusion. But we will get hit with a negative 62 modifier next turn, followed by a negative 11 the turn after. Ready for orders. So there you go. Legio 3 actually gained a rank, so they are now rank 3. And we've got Imperium. Your power knows no bounds. You can now maintain additional armies, fleets, and agents and issue more provincial edicts. Armies has gone from 4 to 6. Fleets has gone from 2 to 3. Spies has gone from 1 to 2. Governors 2 to 3. And champions 1 to 2. The number of edicts that can be enacted per turn has also increased from 1 to 2 as well. So, with this, the household expands. Lucius Julius Libo has got a Greek exile. I was loyal. They exiled me. Plus 8% public order penalties due to local presence of foreign cultures, local province. Plus 8% melee attack skill for all units during battles against Hellenic factions. Useful, but not the best. Like I said, military traditions for Legio 2. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade that now. We are going to get, so we have three options here. Garrison, Auxilla, Engines of War, or Accomplished Skirmishers. We went over Accomplished Skirmishers last time. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is dangerous business. Plus 2% movement speed for all light and very light infantry units. Plus 2% missile damage inflicted by all missile units. Increased missile attack range for all units. And plus 2% shots per minute for all units. I do not use missile units, so we do not get accomplished skirmishers. We either can go into Engines of War or Garrison Auxilla. Engines of War is the mind and the hand are brothers in victory. Plus 3% missile damage inflicted by all siege weapons. Minus 5% attritional losses when besieging. I don't use siege weapons, and I don't besiege for longer than a turn. So, Garrison Auxilla it is. Service to Mother Atalia brings honor and prosperity. Plus 3% melee defense skill for all infantry units, and plus 3% morale for all units during defensive battles. Very good. We also can unlock a few more things now. So, we have three of them we unlocked here. We're going to get Keepers of the Peace. Someone has to consider peace. Plus 2% morale for all units during battles in own or allied territory. But more importantly, plus 3 public order. That's why Keepers of the Peace is good. So we got 2. We will get 1 more to choose from. Remember, in each level we get 3. We're going to go with Frontier Garrison. The borders of the Empire must be maintained. Plus 3% campaign map movement range. And plus 2% morale for all units during battles in own or allied territory. There was one option up there we didn't pick. I guess next time we level up we'll go into it, but it's usually one that I do not pick. We also got a province under our control. You have seized control of the entire province. This will boost its economic and military potential, and you may now use local edicts. Newly captured regional bonuses in Terrace. Your newly acquired region has special attributes that make it different from other regions. These include things like trade, fertility, and public order. Settlement captured. Terrace, you now control the settlement. If your influence in this province is sufficient, you can develop in the settlement to suit your needs. Well, it certainly is. And lastly, settlement looted. Terrace, your forces have looted the settlement, gaining much wealth. The savagery, however, has caused damage and outraged the people. So there's a lot to do. A lot to do. But we are at that 33 minute mark, right? Remember, I like to keep battles short, around 30 minutes, because of what I was describing early on in the siege battle about size of files and such so we're gonna go ahead and end it here and uh see if we kept the file short enough as always thanks for tuning in hopefully you enjoyed the battle of terrace it wasn't very interesting but it was a battle nonetheless and i'll catch you guys next time have a good one